Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Yes, you read the title correctly. We are going to be tackling another drag queen, another Filipino here in this channel representing the Philippines, Manila Luzon. She was known for turning iconic themed looks like her infamous pineapple dress, Big Bird dress, and so much more. She loves blurring the lines of camp and couture, and she's kind of like the Moschino of RuPaul's Drag Race. I chose to highlight a very special look she wasn't able to present in the show, which is the maxi pad dress. I know this dress has sparked some controversy, but I wanted to highlight it for my audience to show that this is completely normal and okay. Manila wanted to showcase this for her curves and swerves, padded for the gods runway look, but it wasn't approved by the show. And I want to quote her Instagram post, I was really looking forward to wearing this gown that I think celebrates celebrates a perfectly normal human experience. Many of my fans are young women who may feel pressured by society to be embarrassed by periods. It's empowering to teach young women about their bodies and encourage them to celebrate them and to question people who tell them not to." End quote. I really love Manila's message for this look since it was really thought provoking and the execution I think was very respectable. So why not immortalize this iconic look into a doll? That being said, let's go ahead and get started. So for Manila, I will be using another Model Muse Barbie doll. It's the same as the doll that I used for James Charles's doll. And this is the Holiday Barbie. I believe it's like 2018. Yeah, she went on sale everywhere. Um, so if you guys want to get her, she is very... She's not affordable, but like, she's cheaper than most, you know. Like I said, I love using the Model Muse bodies just because they do have more of an hourglass figure. Their waist is a little more cinched than normal Barbies that they produce now. So depending on the character that you're trying to create, this might serve its purpose. So even though you don't really see Manila's body in that dress, obviously because the pad was covering it, I still feel like she was completely padded from head to toe, and I still want to give her the hips. So like what I did for James Charles, I will be gluing down her hips so that the legs are permanently posed. So I just fill the cracks with super glue, and you just wait for it to dry. And after it's been dried, I take my epoxy sculpt and I just mix two equal parts together and this will create the industrial clay that we will use as her hip pads. This is completely waterproof and it dries by itself. No need for bacon. One thing you want to do is work in small portions of the clay because it does dry kind of fast where it's really hard to blend. So make sure to work in small portions and blend as much as you can to save us from over sanding. And it doesn't really have to be perfect since it's going to be covered. However, I'm kind of a perfectionist when it comes to blending the seams together. Then I take my sandpaper and I try to smooth it out as much as I can. It's not perfect, but it is going to be covered anyway, so, you know. <laughs> and then we take our acrylic paint, and this I had to formulate in order to kind of skin match it as much as I can. A lot of you guys are coming for me from my Bratz um, doll video. I'm happy with it, so that's what matters. And I feel like I did a good job in this one this time, I think. So let's put that aside and wait for it to dry and now we can work on the face. Actually, we're gonna work on the hair for now. Manila is really known for having a streak of color in her hair. If she has black hair, she'll have blonde and vice versa. And for this one, she had blonde hair with red streak. So how exciting, how fun, how different. I love it. I did order some red doll hair, however, it did not arrive on time. Well, right now I have it here, I'm like holding it too late. However, I did have some blonde um, hair that I can easily dye. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Because doll hair is usually synthetic, you can use fabric dye for it. and. 
Over here, I'm using the toilet fabric dye. I got it from Walmart. It was like two to three bucks, so it wasn't that bad, and it was a red color, so it was meant to be. And in order to really dye doll hair, you need to have blonde or white hair, so it's perfect that I have this streak right here. So it's quite easy, you just get a pot of water and you boil it, in this case it's a well of water, and you just add the fabric dye in there. You don't have to add everything, I don't know why I went overboard and it's literally looking like Bloody Mary over here, and you just dip it in there. I'm using tongs, be careful, as you can see it's steaming hot, and it was hot for me, it's hot for the camera, it's gonna be hot for you. So yeah, you just wiggle it around, dip it a few times, you can check if it's good by washing it. If it's still not as red as you want, you can put it back. But in this case, this was my third time, I think, and I got the perfect red that I want. Isn't this so cool? It looks like a beta fish. Like, look at it, it's just swimming. It looks like Ariel. It looks like a beta fish. It's so cute. It's so serene. I love it. Oh my god, so relaxing. Moving on. So while the hair is still kind of wet, as you can see, it's very, very malleable, it is a lot easier to reroute with, so don't let it completely dry. I just take my rerouting tool that I got from dollyhair.com and surprisingly I did not break any needles this time. I mean, I literally rerouted like, I don't know, like seven times, seven plugs, but still, anything can happen. Then I just take my Fabri-Tac and I completely glue the plugs in place. So I try not to expose the doll's face after I repaint it to any elements of any kind. Water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived together in harmony. So I'm curling her hair now so I can dip it in hot water and later I just need to style it. So obviously I'm not curling the hair just to curl it, I am rotating these curls strategically in order for them to work with the style I wanted to have later. After everything is done, I just dunk her head in hot water and then icy cold water and we wait for everything to dry so we can start on her face up. As usual, I take off her factory paint using acetone or nail polish remover if it has acetone in it. After clearing her face with factory paint, we can now prime her face using Mr. Super Clear. And this will give the rubber doll a paper-like texture so that our pencils or pastels in our paint will work on her. As always, I have all of the materials listed down below, but at the current moment, I am using Derwent watercolor pencils. I do not use them wet, or else you won't get sharp lines. And you always have to make sure to sharpen them all the time. Literally, after one stroke, you sharpen. Another stroke, you sharpen. Literally, I feel like every single stroke of the pencil, I have to sharpen it in order to keep the sharp lines. But it's all good. It's a vital step, so, you know. This is currently the first layer of the Mr. Super Clear, so I'm trying to get as much of the sketch of Manila's face as much as possible. So this is kind of like a vital step, mm, I just broke pencil, of trying to figure out where you want your lines to be um, before you go in for the deeper colors. I don't know why. Oh, I'm going in for black. So look at me. I'm being brave. I'm also adding the pastels now because kind of like the pencils, you have to keep layering them in order to get the true color that you want. So Manila didn't really have a zoomed in version of her makeup look for the maxi pad dress, so I'm not entirely sure what the color scheme is. All I know is she had red lips and her eyes looked very smoky, and I think the safest bet is to keep everything very neutral, very warm, and you know, just play around with a lot of browns and just smoke out her eyes. Thank you. 
With the pastels, I'm going to try and chisel out her face. As you can see, Barbie's face is very, very soft, and I want to give it more of a sculptural look. And now it's time for the nose contour. Manila doesn't really do drastic lines for her makeup. Everything is a little more softer, a little more subtle. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and buff out that white line and soften it up a little bit. So yeah, nothing is really extreme for Manila's um, face makeup. As usual, I love highlighting the brow bone. A lot of drag queens do it. For the dolls, it just gives it more dimension in terms of the shape and the eyes. I feel like it just, I don't know, it just elevates the entire eye makeup a lot more. Manila uses a lot of gray contacts, so I just assumed that she had gray contacts for this photo. And now it's time for my favorite part, which is the black eyeliner. You guys think it's very satisfying? I think it's very satisfying. I feel like we need- I feel like this part needs a jingle, like, I line it, you like it, I line it, I like it, yay! <laughs> I don't know what the heck. I'm adding a little bit of black onto the ends of her crease line, just to give it more of a smoky effect. And then throughout the face up, I just go back and forth onto the same exact details and I just layer everything in order to give it more of a high contrast and to give it more intensity. Back at her cut crease, I'm going at it with different shades of brown to really give it more of a smoky effect. And now it's time for the lashes that you can barely see but make such a huge difference. <laughs> I'm taking my white acrylic paint to fine tune her teeth, the scleras, and also add some catch lights onto her eyes. Now to complete the eyes, I'm going to add some false lashes, and these are actual human fake lashes that I got from a beauty supply store. And to complete the entire face up, I give her lips some gloss. Now the very iconic and most liked currently on Instagram photo from a Drag Race girl has been made in doll scale by the amazing Heather from Dolux Designs as always. She is so iconic and so talented and I had asked her to actually make the train a little more drastic and give it more volume and make it longer like it's literally like dripping and I don't know I just wanted a more grand of a train Manila didn't really have that big of a train but it was in the mermaid shape and I'm living for it For the maxi pad, obviously you can get one, however, I don't want to buy an entire set just so that I can waste something. And also I want the maxi pad to actually be in the shape of the doll. I want it to be bespoke and custom made just for the Manila Luzon doll. So here we go, I'm just cutting it out and I am using felt. Oh my god! Sorry about that, I rarely get text messages so I got excited. I'm just cutting the felt in the shape of a gourd. It literally looks like Gaara's gourd from Naruto. That's so funny. And I cut two of them and I'm just going to layer them together so it's a little more fluffy. And I'm adding the stitches for the details. And then I'll be adding the wings or like the tabs on the sides the same way with stitches. Um, I know a lot of... <laughs> I just sew all the time you guys. I'm like such a seamstress now. I don't know what happened, you know? It's literally like a new year new me type of thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
And now I have the pad completed and I think it looks very accurate. And now it's time for um, the Heinz ketchup, uh, plasma, um, erythrocytes, uh, I don't know. There's no way to keep this PG really. Starting for the blood, um, I'm just taking this white pleather fabric that I cut into the same exact shape and we're going to be painting it red. You know, for the color. The color of love, the color of Valentine's. <laughs> Um, you know. And then for the main perimeter of the blood, I'm just adding some glitter glue in red. For Manila's accessories, she was wearing two red um, bangles, or at least it looked like it. So I'm just taking the same exact pleather fabric, painting it in red and white, and I'm going to be adding some snaps on it for easy wearability. And then for her earrings, she looked like she was wearing this pearl drop crystal red earrings that had some fringe on it. It's a little hard to describe, but I'm taking this um, thread in red and I just bunched it all up and I created kind of like my own tassel. Um, I'm getting some pearls and I'm going to glue it all together. And then after that, I take these dollar store earrings literally in any color. It's so cool, and I take the red and I just glue all of those together. Manila's shoes wasn't really shown, but I just assumed she was wearing red pumps. So over here, I'm taking my pink Model Muse Barbie pumps, and we're just going to repaint it with red bottoms and also red everything. <laughs> red bottoms, red body, everything is red. Going back to her hair, let's go ahead and revisit it and take out all of the straws and unleash the curls. As you can see, it's so cute. I love it. She looks like Goldilocks over here. And I'm just using my got to be some alligator clips, like small alligator clips. And I'm just trying to curl her hair. Manila's hairstyle is a little iffy on doll scale because it's kind of impossible to really recreate the specific curls that she had. Obviously because this is a doll scale. So I just decided to give her kind of like a vintage page boy style very like Dita Von Teese kind of so yeah I didn't really want to cut any length either so I just decided to kind of curl it all under um, but the vital part is getting her bangs correctly now let's go ahead and stop theorizing and start accessorizing Thank you. 